Hello everyone, I'm Sister Connie Smith from the Agape Christian Worship Center, and I'm here today to bring you another word from the Lord. Today we're going to be talking about doubt, overcoming doubt in the times of trouble. We're going to be looking at two passages of scripture today. The first one is an Old Testament passage found in the book of Judges, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6 and 11 through 13. Then we're going to go over to the New Testament and look at a passage in John, the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. So let's get started. Judges, chapter 6, verse 1. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel because of the Midianites. The children of Israel made for themselves dens, the caves, and the strongholds, which are in the mountains. So it was, whenever Israel had sown, the Midianites would come up, also the Amalekites, and the people of the east would come up against them. Then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza, and leave no substance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor donkey. For they would come up with their livestock and their tents, coming in numerous as locusts, both they and their camels were without number, and they would enter the land to destroy it. So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. So the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Go down to verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terabith tree, which was in Ophrah. Where, which belonged to Joash the Abrazite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, that's Gideon, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt and delivered us from the hands of the Midianites? Okay, we're going to read the, the gospel according to John later on in our discussion. But let's just look at this passage right now. Um, in this particular passage, uh, the children of Israel were going through great, great turmoil. They were being oppressed by another people, the Midianites and the Amalekites, and it lasted for seven years. And they just plundered and pillaged their land, took everything they had, including all of their food. And the Israelites were so afraid that they had to dwell in dens and caves to hide themselves and their food. So they were going through a great, great trouble. We are living in times of trouble right now. There's racial turmoil. There's a great political divide. We have riots. We have wars. We have feuds within our own families. Some of us may be going through divorces. We have extended unemployment as a result of what we're going through, just life's disappointments in general. And then on top of it all, we're experiencing a worldwide pandemic. Any one of those things by themselves can cause us to doubt. Faith, we need to understand, is a journey. It has its ups and it has its downs. And the trouble that comes into our lives, the enemy can come in and use that trouble that we're going through to distract us to a point where we get into our feelings, we get into ourselves, and we begin to doubt God, his very existence, and his love for us. Our expectations of God are very earthly. In other words, 
we go from what we can see and what we know in this time, our time, and our life. God's perspective is eternal. He doesn't see through time as we do. He sees through eternity. And he has a plan for us. In our text today, we can see that Gideon, when the angel comes to him to tell him that God has a plan for him, the first thing out of his mouth is, well, where is God? Look at verse 13. Gideon said unto him, the angel, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has this happened to us? And where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? And now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Gabriel is, simply, is saying it simply, Lord, where are you? Why are you letting this happen to us? Why aren't you stopping this? I thought you were a loving God. Where are all the miracles you did for my forefathers? Why can't you do the same miracles for us? How many of you have gone there or allowed yourself to go there? I see the hands. We all have done it for a minute. Maybe some of us even longer. We cannot allow the enemy to use doubt or to use trouble to doubt God. God is not diminished by any trouble that we go through. He's the same God yesterday, today, and he'll be the same tomorrow. Whatever he could do then and did, he can do and will do now. God's perspective is eternal. He sees through eternity and he has a plan for all of us. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, Jesus, or God says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Spiritual doubt can come in many different ways, especially when we get in our emotions and our feelings. And we can even doubt the purpose that God has for our lives. For example, why am I here? What do you want from me, Lord? Or even as we work for the Lord and serve him, we may even get in our feelings because of opposition of those that are around us for what we are doing for God. But just remember, Jesus faced opposition because of his service as well. If Jesus faced it, we certainly will. Doubt arises when we lose focus, when we get into our feelings, when we get into ourselves and dwell on me, 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 me. How do we overcome doubt? Change our focus. Put our focus on Jesus. Let's go to our second scripture found in the Gospel according to John, chapter 14. It's a very popular one. Many of you have heard this scripture read at funerals, memorials, and homegoings. And it's a great scripture of comfort. Let's look at it now. Chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Be, believe also in me. This is Jesus speaking. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, and where I go you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus says, and this is it, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's our comfort. That's our reassurance. 
Only God can provide the confirmation for our faith. He confirms our faith. He reminds us of who he is. He reminds us that he has a plan for us. He reminds us that it's an eternal plan and that we do have something to look forward to. He protects us with this promise and assures us with his word. And that's what we need to do to overcome any doubt, is to continually stay in the word of God, read what he did for others, and see what he can do for us. Remember what he's done for you in your life. Remember that whatever he did for you in the past, he can still do for you in the present and the future time. He left a word for us in Matthew upon his leaving to go back to the Father in heaven in Matthew 26. We call this the Great Commission, where he left us, gave us a goodbye, and told us what to do while he was gone. He says in Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go there and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the time. Or as the passage says, the end of the age. That's our comfort, saying, saints, God is with us. He's always been with us. And even though we're going through terrible toil, uh, turmoil, trouble, and a troubling time. He's still with us. He can take us through it. He has a plan for us. And we just need to remember what it is and focus on him. God be praised for his word today. Now let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father God, we honor you. We adore you. We love you. We glorify your name, and we praise you, Father. And we come before you today with comfort in our hearts, knowing that, first of all, you told us we could come before you with anything that we have or in need of, and that we can ask whatever we desire, Lord. Father, we thank you, first of all, for your sacrifice at Calvary. And now, Lord, we ask, Father, that you will continue to be our comfort you would let us feel and know your presence as we go through any time of trouble in our life. Do not allow us, Lord, to be pulled down in doubt by the trouble that we face, but allow us, Lord, to be pulled up and have our heads lifted up, knowing that you have a plan for us, a glorious plan, and we cannot see it, Father, but we know that it's there. So we pray praise you for that today, Father, and we give you glory. And it's in your name that we pray. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you for listening today, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Be safe.